All right. What's up, everyone? Um, you know, I was literally about to just head out the door and go have a nice little walk and do some thinking. I like to walk and think and trying to come up with <laughs> a solution out of this. Part of the reason why the channel exists, you know, so thank you for coming back and thank you for watching. Um, this is a super impromptu video, like m less so than most of them, but I thought it was important to add sort of maybe to fill in some gaps because I, one of the key factors that I've left out is uh is how much shame i felt okay like uh being being a young you know being a man being a young man and i don't mean even now i mean like before and being somebody that was married that had been offspring come into the world um the amount of shame that i live with and the guilt that i live with now is pretty pretty heavy but it was it was possibly even worse before it took me about I don't know seven or eight years before I actually even really let on what had happened so like if you look at this account this is my first Facebook account and I didn't open it and or sorry Facebook this is my first YouTube account but that actually ties into the Facebook thing because I didn't open up a Facebook account until 2012 and this account was opened up in 2011. I only opened up these accounts as my life started to get kind of more normal. So it took almost two years for things to settle down. I mean, I know people can't understand this, but having children is like, even just one, it, it, it's, it's, it's sort of, um, how do I explain this? It's all consuming. It, it like, you know, you're, especially when you're a new parent right like you're worrying about all sorts of things like like how to care for a child like you're, it's the second one is not nearly as scary as the first one i can tell you that in terms of like knowing what to do and how to do it and reading the signs but like your first one is going to obviously throw you for a lot of loops if you have more than one if you ever have kids that is and navigating that well at the same time um i was working like i said my ex was working we were together at the time and i just i i don't know how to explain it but like all your free time goes into to like a, the kid like they're 24 7 365 things they're not like you know like a cell phone that you can just turn off and you don't want to answer texts right <laughs> like if your kid is hungry and needs a diaper change at you know 2 15 in the morning it's happening whether you want to or not so it, it becomes consuming and you, you stop like thinking about stuff and paying attention to stuff. And like, you know, in, in the past, you'd, you know, this, we had the soccer moms and all these people and like these stereotypes of uh, the stay at home moms who wore the sweatpants all the time and t-shirts and never really changed their outfits and always like what it's because it's why get dressed up when you're just going to get covered in kids slop when you're constantly doing, you know, errands and making food and changing diapers and cleaning up toys and cleaning up messes and, cleaning up kids like it's never ending mothers that's like do the work at home like i've said before it's you know now that we don't really have mothers anymore we're kind of forgetting how uh, crazy of a job it is but it's intense as a person who's had to do caregiving in this past for my own kids when my wife was working right like it's pretty wild so yeah i don't know um i lived in this like umbrella of shame for a long time like even even this YouTube channel, like I said, right? It took me quite a few years to make a YouTube channel. YouTube was around in two thousand six. I didn't really have the equipment to like start a YouTube, and that was one thing that I was very interested in early on when it first popped up. But I didn't have the money for the equipment, and it wasn't just like you can use a cell phone like I'm using right now and get away with it. It was you know back then you needed the video cameras, you needed a, a decent computer. You needed to, you know, be able to um, convert and upload your stuff. Like, it was a timely process and an expense. Much, I mean, relatively speaking, more expensive process than right now. I mean, much more in some cases. Um, I started uploading to YouTube and this channel started. And you'll see a lot of my older videos. It's video game footage. 
I was never trying to be a YouTube star. I was always pretty good at like uh, PvP first person shooters. Um, and I really liked the Dark Souls and those kinds of tough games. And I, I, don't know, I got into the Monster Hunters later. I had a lot of free times. So I was staying home with my kids, right? So when they were go going down for naps and whatever, plus I'm an insomniac. Plus, you know, I didn't have the best relationship with my wife all the time. So, you know, a lot of times we were doing our own things, watching she's in one room, watching TV and pl playing games in another room. So I started uploading directly from my PlayStation or if I had an Xbox, you know, then the Xbox, whatever it was at the time, but usually it was a PlayStation. So that's what almost all my game clips come from, like the years and years. And it's like, that's why this channel has like literally game clips that go back nine years. But this channel was actually always just meant to be a vault for me to store game clips that I was like really happy with. I was never really trying to show them off. At some point I started trying to turn it into a real channel, but I was again too busy with stuff, so I never took it seriously. But yeah, the shame thing, I mean, it becomes so overwhelming that like what happens is you think you, you think to yourself, you're like, okay, look, things went bad in 2009. It'll take me a year or two to get back on my feet. You know, once I get back on my feet, then I will come out of my shell. I will only be 31, 32. I can still network and reconnect with people. Like, it won't be so weird. For me, it already being kind of like naturally a bit of a, of a loner, you know, I ended up just really becoming very reclusive. I was in a hermit because I lived with other people, had my family, but like, I, I really kept to myself and didn't really like mixing with people. Like, you know, I got invited to do some stuff with bands a couple times and I jammed and it was okay. It was fun. They wanted me to come back. I didn't want to go back because I really just became, I don't know, like, like afraid of the world almost, you know, like it was like, it's weird, like, again, like, back then I did have a car, but I didn't really have, like, again, the credit cards and the money, so, like, things were still really sketchy, and I was, like, the car was not in great shape, so I was, like, you're worried about things, like, well, man, can I drive here, because if I, if I drive there and the car breaks down, then, like, what do I do? I can't pay for a tow, I can't pay for repairs, like, the car will be stranded there. Your brain starts thinking weird things. This is something that people with, um, enough can't understand about people that don't have enough, is that even when nothing is really going wrong, your brain is sort of always preparing for the worst so that you can plan, like, 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 like you have to plan for it. Like me, like up here on top of my top bunk here, I have uh, my knapsack and it's, it's packed, ready to go. Um, I take my clothes out of it. I've got a few in the closet, but honestly, most of the clothes I leave in the backpack ready to go. It's got my, uh, my, hand crank uh radio charge because you can charge it as well off like a power supply it's also solar powered it's got my cooking set in it uh my hygiene stuff i just take my hygiene stuff out and i use it like i'm literally living on my backpack now because i don't know i figure it's a matter of time um so it's like maybe like it's like, it's like psychological preparation uh the i'll show you guys actually after i do this thing before i close the video out i have ladies and guys sorry I have um my sleeping bag attached the tent is there came in a bit ago so it's like there's a couple other things I might like to get but again I don't know if I'm going to be doing the car thing like trying to buy a car because that's not really in the cards right now I don't need money right so it's like the car thing is only really happening if some of the channel takes off or I get a job soon through my efforts which I am putting in efforts and then save up enough to buy a car. That's the thing, it's like, it's like even though I don't want to work for a crappy wage, I will, because I, I, I still want to save up to get a car and throw some money in the bank for like, you know, whatever, like a rainy day. Like, I, I'd like to be employed. <laughs> like, it's like, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do though. Like, like it's just, it's, 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 it's aggravating to know that you'll be employed and working and you can't even afford rent. Like, I'll be living in a car, probably, or a tent, and I'll have to work somewhere if it's not a decent wage, which it's not going to be probably, knowing my luck. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyhow, you know, shame keep, kept me from asking for help until just now, basically, with this channel. And I'm kind of doing it because I've gotten fed up. I want to, you know, I want people to know, I want to let the world, world know, or whoever's watching this know that, like, it's not always 
a drug addiction or an alcohol addiction or a serious mental health disorder that puts you out on the streets. It's not like you choosing to do it because you want to. You know, it's like I'm not, I don't fit into any of those categories. Uh, I like, there's, there's, there's other categories too that we, I mean, I don't even know some of them, I'm sure. Right? But there's a lot of reasons why this kind of thing could happen to people that we just don't have the social safety nets. Uh, it depends how much people care about you, what kind of family you come from, how prepared you are, how lucky or unlucky you are. Again, how hard you work, you know, um, what kind of person you are. These things obviously all come into play. Um, but it's like the, the corner rat thing. It's like, I don't deny that maybe at some of job, my jobs in the past, I've had, you know, sort of like a, I wouldn't say a bad attitude, but like, I've been like very sort of like apprehensive and like, didn't, you know, <laughs> afraid to get too close to anybody. Um, and I was very defensive. It's cause I've been like screwed over so many times and all these things I keep trying never work. Like somebody called me the dog that kick, gets kicked while he's down. And that's, a, you know, that's kind of what I am. Another viewer actually made a comment saying that on my tombstone, I should get the, ter the words I tried. I've actually thought of not that, but like similar things. And it's, it sucks because it really does feel like I just keep trying. And um, it, I don't know. I'm probably, again, like, like the, I'm probably not making the best decisions. The paramedic school, for instance, was probably not the greatest decision to make but it seemed like a solid choice for future employment. Even without the injury, it probably wasn't the greatest. I'm not like a super huge dude and I'm not really into like blood and stuff like that, like when it comes to real life. So I, I probably wouldn't have liked it. But you see, I was thinking more in terms of money, uh, job security, longevity, uh, you know, ability to provide for others, the benefits that come with it, you know, pension, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, job opportunities. There, there was reasons why I did that. When people say, "Well, you took a, you know, you took a degree that makes no sense," when I took my degree for humanities, my plan was to go into academia. I wanted to be a TA, and then eventually be a prof. If I wasn't going to go teach in high school, okay, like that's why I took that field. I, I didn't just go for nothing. I I left school because. And it's in one of these videos, but I left school. It's one of the old videos because a girl that I'd been seeing with for seven years broke up with me during my last year. She broke up with me, got back together with me, broke up with me again. Couldn't figure out what she wanted. We've been together for seven years. I'd planned my whole life around her. It was a bit of a shock to the system. I wasn't able to keep focusing on school. My, my 7.0 grade point average it was actually higher than that and it went down because I failed like one course and it pulled them all down and then I had to go take some other ones to pull it back up so I'm at a seven right now basically um but it probably could have been higher and I wouldn't have had an F <laughs> right but like I never failed anything ever done bad until that year when my mind melted for the first time probably so really things probably for me really went off the rails at 24 or 25 you know, I gave up my band for school, which was connected to marrying, you know, or I thought I was going to marry a woman. And I was going to school to provide for both of us because she came from a much worse even family than I did. Like, I didn't marry up. I was going to marry way down. No offense to her. She's trying to be the hero. But once again, it's because I thought, I, I thought my family was in a better spot than we were in. I was always unaware of really you know, what we were worth, our family didn't have like m open discussions about finances and like the, the state of the family. So you just kind of went by what you saw. And like I said, everybody here lives off credit cards. So things always looked good. I was too young to understand until it got too late, right? Yeah, anyhow, so shame dominated my life and I didn't really ask for help for anyone. And that's why I also made that other, you know, video here or there, I made a couple, I think, that re reference like asking for help and being shot down or turned away when you finally finally work up the courage to ask for help and then it, it just falls on deaf ears it, and, and like people ghost you it's it's so sucky 
because like honestly like I don't know you wait and you wait and you wait because you don't want to like let people know what's going on you're trying to keep things secret under wraps so that once you fix things you can come out of it and just be like oh yeah well you know like you didn't hear from me for a couple of years because we were just busy like sorry just life gets in the way nobody has to know about it the only reason I'm doing this right now is because honestly like I'm a stone's throw from living on the streets again I keep referencing like you know when my sister leaves it's just gonna be me and my father and mother man my, my sister said today that my father's just talking funny and saying the wrong tenses and you know like he's 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 a bit older and he's 70 he's he's certain i think you know slip a bit um his attitude like he'll snap at the drop of a hat is like edgy it's not good and then there's my mom sort of the second part is the same deal nice lady lovely lady at, at her core but like today she was depressed because i think she's upset that my sister's leaving she spent the entire day in her room like the entire 24 hour cycle I, she came out like once or twice for 30 seconds it's you know it, I asked her what's wrong and she didn't even turn around she just with her back to me she just went like just like shrugged her shoulders but she didn't even turn around and show me her face she just kept walking I was like okay <laughs> like I haven't done anything like I was cleaning the kitchen and helping her out at that point doing things it was like really weird but the reality is that i think she's upset that my sister's leaving because my sister's like a female and she can help her with you know lady stuff and the daughter mother connection i don't get along with my dad i don't really ha I, I do stuff for them but it's like now it's like the middle of the night i'll go and i'll do all the cleaning and stuff so that when they wake up it's done and then i'm like asleep like i'm like a vampire I try, as soon as I heard the bird, hear the birds chirping, that's my sign to like crawl in bed before the sun, you know, makes it impossible. They wake up with the, you know, the sun comes up, they wake up. I've done my stuff. I've, I've done my contributions to the household, you know. That's like an every night thing here. When I leave, she's probably worried, like she's probably worried my sister leaves, like it's not going to be as messy. Sorry lips dry it's not gonna be as messy but uh she she knows that i want to leave so i think she might be worried that like there's not gonna be as much help for her and and i don't think they need a space this big i think it depresses her living here so chances are they're gonna move downsize and then once that happens i mean really like They'll have to get a place with a room for me, which will cost them more money. Or they can just get a place for just the two of them, maybe even move into an old person facility, which puts me with nowhere to go. It's like, I will not be able to afford rent. So that'll put me with my tent. Um, possibly, if I, if, again, if I had money, a credit card, you know, like credit card limits, if I had money, maybe I should apply for another card soon. I don't know my credit's ruined so they'll say no anyhow so th that was a joke but if i get a car maybe buy a used car at least I, I can have somewhere to stay right and then my sister and her uh, boyfriend said i could visit and shower there so i have a place to go to shower and to chill out and hang out if i want to sometimes um, i'm sure my parents would let me drop by to shower but you know i i mean who knows where they're gonna be it could be a million miles away i doubt it but you know so anyhow, yeah, it's, uh, I, I probably waited too long to ask for help is the problem. A lot of that has to do with shame. I kept this a secret from everyone, from everyone. It has a lot to do with shame. That That's why I'm so cut off from my friends and why I don't really have a network. I, I realize I've never really talked about that, but it's because the shame of my situation made me like, just stop talking to people I knew. A few people cut me off that did actually, I did tell. And that made me even worse because I was like, whoa, I told these people what's going on. Like probably five or six years ago when it wasn't so bad. And instead of like stepping in and intervening and trying to like, you know, again, you know, help me write my course, they just kind of like disappeared or even give me advice or something. They just like kind of like disappeared. 
And uh, so I kind of was like, you know what? Better not tell anybody anything anymore. Better not share this info. It's too heavy for people. And I just, I've, I've been keeping it in for so long and I want to talk to like therapists and stuff like that, like psychology. Nope, you cannot get my doctor to send me anyone. I talked to my doctor about it directly because he was like, just talk to me about what's going on. It's fine. And I'm like, oh man, I don't, I think this is too much for you. It's too much. And now here I am. And I just, it's all I think about. It's all I talk about. If I go and hang out with, you know, my family in the other room, this is why I keep to myself. If I go hang out with one of them, I'll just start going on about this stuff and about my situation and how I can't figure a way out and blah, 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 blah. And then my dad will get upset because you know, he's older and I think he kind of feels semi-responsible because I helped him out and he knows, but he'll never admit that. And my mom feels bad because that's your my mom and mother. So it, it upsets her, just brings her down. So I really try and keep to myself. Don't want to talk about it. So what does that leave me with? I got like nobody else. I got one friend. I don't want to keep venting to her about it. She will listen. She's amazing. She's like a crazy, you know, listener. And she'll, she, she knows because she's in her, been her own rough spot for many years ago. But I don't want to do that to her. The thing is, she was in her rough spot when she was younger, you see. So she managed to pull out of it. And now she's still younger than me. So she's got a good future ahead of her. It, when, when you fall down, like, kind of... Like, I mean, I fell down in my late 20s, early 30s, but I semi picked myself up and went, was going good for 10 years. There was the, it was the falling down at 39, which was only five years ago. It was that one that was sort of like uh, the final blow. You know what I mean? That was like that, what do they call it? The coup de grace or something like that? I don't know. I'll have to look that one up. I probably got that wrong. Sorry if I, I got that wrong and I seem really dumb. I mean, I guess I am. I'm not the smartest guy. Like I've said this before, right? Uh, but yeah, essentially shame kept me keeping it as a secret. Um, only talked about it with like two or three people. I probably scared them away. I think drove my wife nuts. My ex-wife now. Um... She's living it, still not really great for her, but she just, you know, she's not like me. She won't, she won't complain about it. I complain about it, try and find a solution. She just kind of rolls with it, like, and, you know, it is what it is. Instead of trying to find a solution or being upset, and I, I'm not like that. I've always been built to rock the boat, as I said in my other video. Because in the punk and hardcore, man, like, it's not my fault. I'm sorry, I can't help it, <laughs> you know? This is who, like, I mean, I was in the metal, like, this is what I'm about. You know, you challenge authority. So, anyhow, I, I, I should probably wrap this video up pretty soon, but, yeah, the shame factor was brutal. It, it actually is such a powerful emotion and powerful force, like, it, it has, it, now it's turned me into a recluse. It's, I, I go out pretty much only at night's. You know, there's a few places that you can go to um, around this area, believe it or not, that are 24 hours. So I can get something if I need to get food or like a snack or something. And there's always something like somewhere to walk to if I need to walk somewhere and just go in somewhere. Like I just want to like feel human. But generally speaking, I don't even like I'm a vampire now. I uh, get up around one or two like the, it's such a doomer stereotype. And uh, have like, you know, whatever, get dressed, well, shower, get dressed, you know, my hygiene. And then maybe eat something. I only eat like once every 12 hours now. It's, it's really weird how my body started to change with age, but also it's almost like it's training itself. Like it knows it's not gonna get, it's not gonna get what it wants and needs. Cause I used to eat a lot more a few months ago. And like, now I'm just like, I eat like, once every 12 hours pretty much and i sleep about like two or three well yeah three hours i would say three to three and a half actually let's be real here three to three and a half two will will happen but i will feel like crap if i sleep for two hours so every 12 hours i sleep about three three and a half hours and i eat like one meal and one meal will consist of like i don't know like a slice or two of pizza you know like not very much food just don't have much of an appetite i'm always thirsty drink a lot still like not alcohol but like 
you know, liquids, other beverages, but yeah, I don't know, kind of off topic, I just weird, but yeah, the shame thing, just don't let it take over your life, because that's what happened to me, it, it, it not only took over, but like, it honestly, it ruined it, because I, keeping myself hidden away from the world, because I was afraid of revealing what had happened to myself, has actually made it worse. Because when I went, when I, like, now people are like, wow, how can you be in this situation? Like, like, 10, 15 years, like, how can it go on for so long? And it's like, honestly, like, I have reached out to a couple people, like I said, that scared them off. A few stuck around and offered talking advice, one or two, but, like, they couldn't do much. But I was like, look, from, from what I learned, it's like, you either scare people, or you talk, you have people that will help and talk, like, in the talking sense, but they can't do much for you, probably. So I was like, you know what, I... <laughs> I may as well just keep it to myself. But it will this kind of thing will eat away at you. It will just eat and eat and eat. You know, not your insides like a like a terminal illness. You know, somebody put in one of my videos, one of the viewers, um, I'm losing my marbles. I, he's not wrong, to be honest. Sometimes I feel like I'm I've lost it, I'll be honest with you. I wonder sometimes whether or not I would be able to survive and like you know, if I went back to, like, a job at, like, a Walmart or a grocery store or, like, a retail type thing, like, I don't even think I could do it just because I, I think that they would fire me. I think that I would not last because I just, it makes, they, they make me super unhappy. Like, they're so crushing. So it's like I'm in this weird spot. It's like I, I do want to work, but I, I, I just can't, it can't be the wrong thing. It's, I've had too much of, I've had, I've had my fill of the other stuff. You know, it makes me feel like I'm choking. You know, and when, when you do the other stuff and it doesn't really get you anywhere, that's the problem. When it just gets you by for 30 years or, you know, that's an exaggeration. When, you, when you're doing things that just gets you by for like 15 or 20 years, let's say, you know it's never going to get better. So you really you don't want to do it anymore. Right? Like I need to I need to figure out how to turn this channel into a more elaborate and profitable type of revenue um, stream. And you know, if that means branching it off into other types of things, that's fine. You can talk about different content. People can leave comments and then you know, I can do totally different content from this. You know, but if you like the lecture style, I can do that. You know, I think people, some people seem to like the way I deliver my, the messages that, are in, you know, the information I'm talking about. So if you, if you want something, we can do that. Other than that, you know, I can tell you honestly, like, it's hard for somebody in a situation like mine to think clearly about what to do, like what the next move should be, right? Because look, like the last time I had... So I, as I said before in another video, I, I, I didn't take OSAP for university. I didn't. But then I said in another video that I took OSAP for college. I did. So I took a small OSAP loan to go to the college two years ago. But the original time I went to school and the second time I went back to York, like those, but all the York was paid for out of my pocket. All the university was me. Out of pocket. Not my parents, not, not the government. The college was government. And the thing is, now I'm on the hook for like five grand to them. And the last time I went to school to the York and paid out of pocket, I told you like it was like three or four grand. And it's like, what have I really got to show for that? Like almost $10,000 pretty much, you know? Like, like it's gotten nothing. It's gotten nowhere. So I'm, I'm really hesitant about like making decisions and spending money because I could have like a car right now. Mind you, I'd have to pay insurance on all of this. So it's like, that's the trick, right? Like once you get a car, then you need to pay insurance and maintenance gas. You know, it's like an apartment. Once you get an apartment, you gotta pay rent and hydro and electricity. Like these, these are the things that rope you into needing a full-time job. So it's like, I'm not unaware that I need a full-time job, guys. I'm not 12. I've been working since I was 14. I think I did actually other work like for people when I was like, when I was like 12. Like, you know, just like favors and errands, you know, babysitting type things back in the day. But I had my first like, job where somebody paid me a decent check like when I was like 14 and it was like you know I can't remember exactly what it was I think when I put some trees on a property trees are still there 
And anyway, peace out, everyone. Have a good one. Just hit like or subscribe. Um, I'll show you the. I'll show you actually the. If it's safe. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of weird, but like I have everything. This is what I have. Like I have everything ready to go. Sort of. I just want to make sure that. I. I just want to make sure that if something. I don't know, something weird happens. I live with old people that aren't 100% health, so if something weird happens, and I can just go, like, yeah. So this channel, I didn't realize, it's turned into some kind of, like, diary slash philosophical diatribe. Very strange. But it gives me the opportunity to vent and hopefully help some people not make the same mistakes I did. Peace. And uh, I really appreciate the subs and the likes and the, you know, awesome supportive commentary. I don't feel so alone. Thank you.